In today's video, we are going to go over an explanation of everything you wanted to know about the next kind of simple machine, and that is the lever. So this is levers and explanation. Before we get started, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel, Step by Step Science. Get all my excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos. Please support my channel. You should subscribe, click the notifications bell, comment, give me a thumbs up, and don't forget to share this video. And of course, I've made a bunch of other teaching and learning materials, which you can find at my teacher's pay teacher's website where you're looking for example problems, practice problems, notes with solutions, uh, puzzles, and some online simulations and labs you can do with PHET interactive simulations. It's all available at my website. The link is in the description below. And of course, I've made other videos for this topic and simple machines, which you can link to those in the upper right-hand corner of this video. But this is, of course, levers. We're going to go over everything you've ever wanted to know about levers. I think that maybe this is the most common kind of lever when people think of a lever. You think of a seesaw where you have a mass or a force over here, and the force over there is what we call the output force, and sometimes people call it the load. I'm going to refer to it as the output force. And if we want to raise up the output force, the output force points straight down from gravity, you have to apply a force on the other side of the lever, and that force will push down, and then you'll raise the other object up. And the force that you apply is the input force, and some people refer to that as the effort. So we have the output force and the input force, or the load and the effort. And then we have the fulcrum, which is right in the middle there, in this case at least. And that's where the pivot, the pivot point, or the fulcrum, and the distance from the fulcrum to the output force, we're going to call the output lever arm, which I'm going to abbreviate OA. And then on the other side, of course, we're going to have an input lever arm, which I am going to abbreviate IA. And I think those are the main things that you should know about the levers as far as the kind of the, how it's set up. The fulcrum, the output force, and the input force, and then the two lever arms like that. Now, for levers, there's actually three different kinds of levers, three different classes of levers. This is a first-class lever. This is a second-class lever. And this is a third-class lever. Now, all of these levers have a fulcrum and output force and an input force, a fulcrum and output force, Okay, or the load and the effort, a fulcrum and input force and output force. Those are the things they all have, but the way we differentiate a first, a second, and a third class lever is really what is in the middle between the other two things. That's the easiest way to think about it. So the first class lever, the fulcrum is in the middle. So the first class lever, we put an F. Okay, the first class lever, F. That means the fulcrum is middle and the output force and the input force are on the opposite sides. The second class lever, the output force or the load is in the middle. So second class is O, and that means the fulcrum and the input force are going to be on opposite sides. And then, of course, a third class lever, we had the fulcrum in the middle, the output force in the middle, and then we're going to put the input force in the middle. And that's a third class lever, and that we designate that like with an I. And the fulcrum and the output force are on opposite sides of the input force. We have first, second, and third class levers, FOI. And uh, FOI will remind you what is in the middle. And then the other two things are on the opposite side. It doesn't matter whether this fulcrum is on this side and the output force is on this side. The main thing is, is the input force is in the middle for the third class lever. Okay, so that is how we designate first, second, and third class levers. And now we're going to go through some specifics about how those levers work and the mechanical advantage for each of those levers and some simple calculations. Okay, now, of course, we're going to go over first class levers first. And you can tell this is a first class lever because the fulcrum is in the middle between the output force and the input force. And that's what designates a lever as a first class lever. That's what we have first class F right here. This is the first class lever. Now, there are three different ways that I want to go over that you should kind of be aware of how you can set up a first class lever. They're not different classes. They're all first class because the fulcrum is always going to be in the middle. But there's three different ways that we can set it up. And I'm going to go over those right now. And the first way we're going to set it up is when the distance from the fulcrum to the input force and the distance from the fulcrum to the output force are equal to each other. So the output arm is equal to the input arm. 
Okay? Now, we're going to calculate the mechanical advantage, and we're going to use this equation to calculate the mechanical advantage, which is the input arm divided by the output arm is equal to the mechanical advantage. Now, each of these is 10 centimeters or a tenth of a meter, and this is 3, 6, 7 away, and this one is also 7 away. So that means that those distances are 0.7 meters, and that means that the mechanical advantage is 1. So you should notice that if the input arm and the output arm are equal to each other, the mechanical advantage is 1. Now, the output force is 120 newtons, and we want to know how much force do we have to apply to lift that object or to hold that lever balanced like that. And we can use this equation, which we've used before to calculate the input force. Mechanical advantage is output force divided by input force. We want to calculate the input force. That means the input force is the output force divided by the mechanical advantage. The mechanical advantage is given, excuse me, the output force is given, the mechanical advantage we calculated, and therefore mm -hmm. we know that the input force is going to be 120 divided by 1 which is 120 newtons. So it should kind of make conceptual sense if that this distance is equal to this distance, then the force that we have to apply is also going to be equal. So that means that the input force and the output force are going to be equal to each other. All right? Now to summarize that, if those two distances, the input and the output arms, are equal to each other, the mechanical advantage will always be 1, and the input force will be equal to the output force. Okay, so that's the first way to set up a first-class lever. Now, of course, the second way, the next one, will be when those two distances aren't equal. So you can see I move the input force out, I move the output force in, and in this case, the output arm is less than the input arm, or the input arm is greater than the output arm. We moved it out here. And how is that going to change the mechanical advantage and the input force? Well, let's calculate the mechanical advantage. The mechanical advantage is IA divided by OA, input arm, output arm. This is 10 away. That's one meter. This is five, one, two, three, four, five. That's half a meter. And that means the mechanical advantage is two. Okay. And that should make a little bit of sense because this distance is twice this. So it's two. Now, what about the input force? We're going to use the same equation. The input force is the output force divided by the MA. Okay. And if this distance is twice as far, what do you think the force is going to be if this is 120 newtons? Okay, how much force are we going to have to apply? Well, we're going to divide the output force, which is 120, divided by 2. And you can see, because the mechanical advantage is 2, and the input force is twice as far away, we only have to apply half the force. You see, you get a mechanical advantage. There's an actual mechanical advantage in that case of 2. And that means the input force is going to be half of the output force. That means if I move the input force farther and farther away, then I'm going to have to apply less force and the input force will decrease. Okay, so let's summarize for when the input arm is greater than the output arm, and that means that the mechanical advantage will always be greater than 1, and the input force will always be less than the output force. Okay, that's the second way to set up a first class lever. Now, of course, the third way is going to be when the output arm is greater than the input arm. We move the output force out, we move the input force in. This is 0.4, this is 0.8, and we can calculate the mechanical advantage again, the same equation. The input arm is 0 0.4, 0 0.8, and you get 0.5. Okay? Now we can calculate the input force. Now, this is now twice as far away, or the input force is half the distance as the output force. What do you think the force is going to be that we're going to need to raise this 120 Newton object up using our input force? All right, we can calculate the input force the same way. It's the output force 120 divided by the mechanical advantage. The mechanical advantage is 0.5. It's less than 1. So that means we're going to have to apply 240 Newtons. All right, if the input force is less, excuse me, if the input arm is less than the output arm, then the input force is going to be greater than the output force. All right, so that means that if the output arm is greater than the input arm, that means the mechanical advantage is going to be less than one. So you don't really have a mechanical advantage. Okay. You might have a speed or a distance advantage, but you don't have a mechanical advantage because the input force is always going to be greater than the output force. Okay, that's the three ways to set up a first-class 
lever. Now, here's just an example of a first-class lever. This is a can opener or a bottle opener. Here's like a can opener on this side. And you can see when you use this object to open a bottle or a can, you put the can right there, and that means that that's the fulcrum. That's the pivot right there. All right, and then you apply a force with your hand somewhere down here. Then there's a force applied right here at the tip. That's the output force. And you can see that that lever arm, the input lever arm, is going to be greater than the output lever arm. Okay, and that's the second kind of first class lever that we went over. But still, the fulcrum is in the middle, so that's an example of a first class lever. All right, now we can go on and talk about second class levers. And we know that this is second class lever because the output force is between the fulcrum and the input force. And that's the designation O for output force, second class lever O. We know if the output force is between the other two, then that is going to be a second class lever. And in this case, for a second class lever, okay, there's only one way to set it up. And the way to set it up is that the input arm the distance from the fulcrum to the input force is always going to be greater than the distance from the fulcrum to the output force, which we call the output arm. Okay, that's always going to be the case. You can't set up a second class lever really any other way. All right, this distance will always be greater than this distance. Now, we're going to calculate the mechanical advantage for this one, the mechanical advantage being, again, the input arm divided by the output arm. Now, this is 1.8 meters, and this is 0.6 meters. So when we divide 1.8 by 0.6, we get 3. So that means the mechanical advantage of that second class lever in this case is 3. Now we want to know what is the input force. How much force do we have to apply right here to lift this up? If this object has a weight of 120 newtons and it's one-third the distance to the input force, or the input force is three times as far as the output force, okay? We, what do you think it's going to be? This is 120 newtons. Well, we're going to use the same equation for the mechanical advantage. We're going to convert that and solve for the input force. And that means it's the output force divided by the mechanical advantage. And that means when we take 120 and divide it by 3, we get 40. So that means that when the input force is three times as far away as the output force, then the force that we have to apply is one-third. That's the mechanical advantage that we get. It's the mechanical advantage of 3. So this machine is kind of multiplying our input force by a factor of three. And in this case, for, uh, for a second class lever, the input arm will always be greater than the output arm. And that means the mechanical advantage will always be greater than one. And that means that the input force, which is kind of the reason we, wa the reason we use simple machines, the input force will always be less than the output force. Okay? So that's all there is to second class levers. There's only one way to set it up. All right, now here, this is kind of the most, when I think of a second class lever, this is the kind of the most common second class lever I think of. This is, of course, only one kind. This is a wheelbarrow, and this guy's carrying these two sacks of what look probably cement. And this is kind of the diagram we have, and we have the fulcrum. Well, the fulcrum is right there where the wheel is. When you lift it up, it pivots right there. So that's the fulcrum right there. Okay, the output force pushes down, pushes down right there. That's the output force is the weight that he's carrying, the load that he's carrying. And the effort that he applies or the input force that he applies is up in that direction. Okay, and he's going to have to apply less force than the weight of those objects. All right, so that's a good example of a second class lever. Now, of course, the next one is the third class lever. And the third class lever, we give the designation I. And that's because the input force is between the fulcrum and the output force. The input force is in the middle, and then these two are on the outside. And that means, in this case, for a third class lever, it's always going to be that way. The output arm is going to be greater than the input arm. The input force is going to be closer to the fulcrum than the output force. Okay? That's the only way, there's only one way to set up a third class lever. We can now calculate the mechanical advantage again using the same equation. And you get that that's 0.6, because this is 0.6, and this is 1.2. This is 6 ticks, and this is 12 ticks away. And that means that the mechanical advantage of that kind of lever, and this, well, in this case, is going to be uh, 0 0.5. There, that's, there isn't really a mechanical advantage. You don't get a mechanical advantage from using a third-class lever. You might get like a speed or a distance advantage, but for a mechanical advantage, it's less than one, so there is no advantage. So now, what is the force going to be? 
How much force do we have to apply right here to lift this up? This thing has a weight of 30 newtons, okay? 30 newtons, and this distance is half of this distance. So we know the mechanical advantage is less than one. Well, we're gonna calculate the force. That means the output force is 30, okay? Because that thing weighs 30. The mechanical advantage we calculated is 0.5, and that means that the force that we have to apply is 60 newtons which is twice the output force because the input force is half the distance between from the fulcrum that the output force is. So that means that for a third class lever, as I said, the output arm is always greater than the input arm because this thing is in the middle. All right, the input force is in the middle. That means for a third class lever that the mechanical advantage is always less than one. So there isn't really a mechanical advantage for a third class lever. And that means the input force is always going to be greater than the output force, like that. Okay, so that's the three classes of levers, first, second, and third class lever. Now this is, these are two different third class levers. These are like tongs you might use for barbecue or cooking, and this is a hammer. All right, each of these has a pivot. The pivot for the tongs is right there. Okay, that's where the fulcrum is. The fulcrum now, for a hammer, you don't really think about it, but when you hit with a hammer, the fulcrum where the thing pivots is right there on the end, so to speak. And then for the tongs, you apply a force right here when you squeeze it shut. This is kind of like two third class levers put together. And then you apply the force here with your hand to see the input force is in the middle. And the output force that you get is farther away from the fulcrum, just like the output force is farther away from the fulcrum from the hammer. So those are two examples of third class levers. Okay, now I think what we're going to do is we're going to summarize. First class lever, okay, this is the summary of the whole thing. Okay, there's three ways to set it up. The first way we said is if these two are equal to each other, and that means the mechanical advantage is one, and the two forces are gonna be equal to each other. Now, if the input arm is greater than the output arm, if it moves out and this moves in, then the mechanical advantage is one, is gonna be greater than one, and that's why we use some machines, because that means the input force is gonna be less than the output force. The third way to set up the first class lever is when the output arm is greater than the input arm. In that case, there really isn't a mechanical advantage. The mechanical advantage will be less than one, and we have to apply more force than the output force to lift that object up or to move that object. Okay, for second class levers, there's only one way to set it up, okay? And that means that the input arm is always gonna be greater than the output arm, and that means the mechanical advantage will always be greater than one. And that means that the input force will be less than the output force. For the third class lever, excuse me, okay, there's only one way to set it up, and that's with the output arm greater than the input arm, which means that once again, in this case, just like we had for the third way to set up the first class lever, the mechanical advantage is less than one, and the input force is going to be greater. So we're going to have to apply more force here than the weight of the object like that. Okay, so I think that's all the basics, everything you need to know for the basics. Just kind of remember this, I think, is especially the mechanical advantage part. All right, and that should get you there. Okay, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, please do all of the following five things. Support my channel by subscribing. Step-by-step -step science. Get all my excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos. You should click the notifications bell so you don't miss anything. You should leave me a nice positive comment in the comment section below. You should give me a thumbs up. And of course, you should share this video. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the next video.